you so much. Now, that's ac extra special. That's extra special. Thank you, Sister Sue, and it's so good to see you. Good to see everybody here. What? Is that Jeff over here? Hey there. How you doing? You know, Jeff, he, he, he is the epitome of social distancing. <laughs> And y'all better look at him now, cause after everything is over with, he hitting that door. <laughs> so I like that. And so a good example. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here. Great to see each one of you. Uh, I'm just uh, feeling extremely blessed this morning. I want to let you know that I, I kid a lot about your pastor, but he is so helpful to me. He helps me to see myself, Brother Jeff. And... I just, you know, I think that's what a help me is. <laughs> and so uh, he helps me with that. And a lot of times, and we, we talk about that here in the Lord's Academy, a lot of times when you're self-conscious, then God can't do what it, he is, what it is he needs to do in your life. And so uh, I've been self-conscious these past few days over uh, uh, some things. And he helped me to see this morning that the reason I'm feeling like I'm failing in it is because of self. And you know what? I, I, I can't do nothing but say amen because that's exactly what it is. And so I want to say thank you so much for, uh, you know, just uh, telling me the truth. Because ain't nothing going to help us but the truth. And that's all that's going to help us. And so I appreciate you for that. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, please, to Malachi, the second chapter. Uh, Malachi, and we're going to go ahead, and I may give you some time back this morning. I'm not going to force it, whatever, wherever it lands, that's where it lands. And so uh, um, Malachi, uh, the prophet who uh, is what we know of as the last writing prophet here, uh, before we hit the bridge over to uh, what we call the Gospels and what's uh, commonly referred to as the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So Malachi had something to say, though. You know, he didn't tell us a lot about himself, but he had something to say. And he came at a time, he talked to uh, Jerusalem, he talked to the Jews at a time when uh, they needed to hear a word from the Lord. You know that there is always a place for the word of God. There's always a place for the word of God. But now sometimes, uh, Brother Herman, we're not in a place where we want to hear That's right. the word of God because we are in self. Mm -hmm. Because we're doing what we want to do because we are uh, satisfied with where we are. But then God, in his infinite wisdom, has a way of giving us just what we need when we need it. You know, we don't know what we need a lot of times, right. but God does. And so God, in his infinite wisdom, sent Malachi to arouse them again. It, it amazes me how, how God is just so timely with what he does. It amazes me that at... A, a particular point, he knows exactly what to do and when to do it and how to do it. He knows exactly what to say. So they were just doing what they wanted to do. And he sent Malachi to say, it's time for y'all to return to me. And so uh, here he was talking to uh, the Jews and, you know, they wanted to talk back to him. That's just, just like, you know, our children want to talk back to us, you know, a lot of times. And then, you know, I, I, I'm going to stay with me and my husband a lot of times. I want to talk back to him. And, and, and so, you know, when you're talking back to each other like that, can't get nothing done. Can't get nothing done. And so they were having this exchange with God as Malachi came to talk to them. You know, uh, uh, they, they, they had an exchange with them. They wanted to question everything that Malachi was uh, saying to them. And so now at this point where we are in chapter two, he's talking to the priest because the priest had uh, gone about and, and dishonored God's name uh, by they were despising the very privilege of being priests. And I think this is where we ended last Sunday. 
So in Malachi 2, verses 1 through 5, it says this, And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, so, so, so see, it was not, as I was saying last Sunday, it was not a heart thing for them. It was a head thing. And so when you're doing things from your head, you know you're going to do all sorts of things. You're going to do it the way you want to do it. You're not going to do it where it is to the advantage of the greater good. It's only going to be for you. And so he says, if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. It's not in your heart to do the right thing. And so you're already cursed. And so that's a sad, sad commentary for the priest because ultimately it was their job to give glory to God and to be an example to the people that they were teaching, that they were leading to show them how God should get the glory in everything that was being done. He says, behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts, my covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. And so we know that that's the, the priesthood, that's where uh, it came from, uh, or that's where the tribe of Levi is where the priesthood was. And so they were taking for granted the high calling. It's a high calling to be able to carry the word of God. God, Pastor Bland. That's a high calling. I don't, uh, oh, oh my God, it's a high calling. And, and, and a high calling because, again, you have people who are looking to you. And so uh, if we just said it, nothing will help the people but the truth. The people are looking for you for the truth. They're looking to you for the truth. And so at this time, they were, it was contemptible what they were doing. They were serving at the altar, but it, it was just a job to them. It was not a ministry. It was just a job to them. And they did it, did it to please themselves and not to give the glory to God. And so if, if, when you're talking about ministry, now, ministry, just, just by the sheer nature of what it is, Brother Herman, it means to serve. That's right. When you're in ministry, it means to serve, and serve translates into giving. It translates into giving. So when you're serving, you don't look to be served. You don't look to have glory heaped up on you. You don't look to get, you know, the satisfaction that you get should be from being able to help somebody else. That's, that's the glory in ministry. Now, now sometimes it is a, a thankless job, but uh, that doesn't mean that you don't continue to serve because you're not in it for you. You're in it to help somebody else. And so when it becomes just a job, can you see that happening in today's society that uh, what is supposed to be ministry, oftentimes it looks like people are in it for what they can get out of it rather than what they can give to the people. Have you noticed that in, in any instances? Sometimes it seems to be running rampant because we have lots and lots of ministries and you have to wonder what in the world is really going on. Is everybody speaking the same thing? Is everybody, you know, what, what is the goal of the ministries? And so then it, it has to be, um, it has to not be to you just a job, but it has to be uh, so that God gets the glory and God's people are edified. And so the priest had turned away from God's law. Look at uh, verses six through 
uh, 9 and verses 6 through 7, when you look at that, it describes uh, the perfect servants of God when it talks about truth on their lips, obedience in their walk. Well, let's just read it. Verse 6 says, the law of truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. That's if you're walking in the way that God wanted you to walk. If they were, had been walking in the way that God wanted them to. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Now that's the way it ought to be. But the priests were not following this pattern. Look at verse 8. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. And it is something when uh, you're the one who's the keeper of that, uh, uh, who, who is the one who, uh, as I had said earlier, you're supposed to be uh, the example, uh, but then people begin to disrespect you because of, uh, because of how you are and what you're doing. And that's what was happening. How could they respect them when they were allowing any and everything to occur? They were allowing them to bring offerings to the Lord that were unacceptable. They were doing that just to get what they could get because they thought that they were going to come up short. And so in order for them not to come up short, Pastor Bland, they made sure that they got something, no matter what it was. And so it was a blemish. Uh, it was a blemish on them as priests, and it was a blemish actually uh, to the testimony of what God was able to do. And so uh, as we continue to read in verse 10, it says, <clears throat> have we not all one father? Have not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our father? Judah hath dealt treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved and hath married the daughter of a strange God. The Lord will cut off the man that doeth this, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacles of Jacob, and him that, and him that offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regarded not the offering any more, or receiveth it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say. Wherefore, because the Lord had been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth against whom thou have dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet he, yet had he the residue of the spirit and wherefore one that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. You know, you're putting them away. <laughs> you, you're putting them away to go after the wife of a strange guy. And, uh, you know, that's totally against the law of Moses. They were going totally against what God had uh, told them, totally against what they had covenant to, uh, with God to do. And so it says, for the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away for one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. Ye have wearied the Lord with your words. Ye have wearied God with your words. Now, now, now we know that God is God. So now for God to get tired would make God like us, right? But so in other words, you're disrespecting them. 
You're disrespecting God with what you're doing. You know, you, you, you saying one thing and you're doing another, and you're saying one thing and you're doing another. This is just total disrespect. So here they go talking back to God, yet ye say, how have we wearied him? So then their words were full of a cynicism and they were skeptical. And so they were saying in effect, they were saying in effect, now look, you said, you're talking about how we are wearing God, but we came back here to the land. We rebuilt the temple, restored the worship, but now look at everything that's happening to us. Look at everything that's happen, happening to us. You say everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. That's what, that's what uh, Israel was replying back. Everyone that doeth evil look like, it, look, like, look like they getting along better than we are getting along. And he delighteth in them. It looked like, uh, you know, the more the evil they do, the more they prosper. And here we are, we're, so, we're just trying to make it. And so that was their excuse as they were going back and forth with God. Where is the God of judgment? The same place he was, the same place he always had been, same place he always had been, yet he's still saying return. See, they had forgotten, Pastor Blaine, the terms of the covenant and the conditions laid down by the prophets. And it was just simple. Now remember that covenant that they had was a conditional covenant. Uh, God said, if you do this, I'll do this. But if you don't do this, I won't. If the people obey God's law, God will bless them with all they needed. And so then we said this last Sunday, they were looking for justice here. But what they should have been uh, looking for was mercy. And a lot of times that's, that happens to us. When we, want, we want justice to be exacted. We want justice to be executed. But what we really should be looking for is mercy. I couldn't stand justice. No. I couldn't stand it. And so I need mercy. I need mercy. Now justice is good, you know, when it, when it works. But who is just? Who, who is just? Who is really able who is able to execute justice? Because you always got, you got something in your mind, don't you? You, you, got, a, you got your way of thinking about something. And whoever it is you're looking to uh, have justice come from, they got a certain way of thinking in their mind th that they look for justice. Lady Deborah, after almost 30 years in, in the justice system, my attitude is, is, I'm not really looking for justice. I'm looking for fairness. Okay. Be because justice always, what we call justice, has to be tempered with mercy. Mm hmm Because we are human. Anybody else? Thank you, Pastor Belan. And so uh, Malachi, when they began talking like that, then he just brought up, he just started talking about, <laughs> he started talking about who was getting ready to come. Because, you know, they were acting like they had lost their mind. So he started talking about John the Baptist. And then he talked about the messenger of the covenant. And that, of course, is Jesus Christ. Lady Deborah, I think what causes failure instead of success is not understanding foundational things. Now, the problem with mankind now it comes down to spirit and flesh is the fact that you can't do nothing and God can do everything. Mm. And if you don't believe that, it, it, inevitably you're going to mess up because you're going to have confidence in your, in your flesh. Mm -hmm. It's just, Robert, it's just like going on a job. Now, you may be able to do the job wonderful, but if you forget who the boss, you see what I'm saying? You know, I remember a coach, he, he took his team, uh, and I like the coach. He took his team all the way to the Western Conference Finals. But then after, you know, they lost that, but he, they fired him. And the thing about it was, he was getting on the news, he was talking about the owners. And I had a frat brother that was working with them, and he said, he told him, he said, man, you might be making a million dollars, but they writing a check. You see? 
And so I, I just think that, that the problem comes when you don't hold to eternal foundational truths. And the truth of the matter is, is that God is God all by himself. He was God yesterday. He's going to be God tomorrow. You ain't none of God. And, and that, that's where we, that Lady Deborah, uh, when we can start getting blessed, it mess us up. You see what I'm saying? How many people do you know that you can tell them something when they ain't got nothing? Help us, Lord. When they in trouble. When, when you know, the children in trouble. When, you know, they, they knocking the church door down. They calling you, worrying you. Pray for, for, pray for this and pray for that one. As soon as things get back normal and look like everything is all right and whatever, let me, I'll give you this example here and I'm going to leave it alone. I, you know, I reference a whole lot of things to Cocaine Anonymous. Mother, we have folk that come in, and you know, person been on cocaine, don't nobody want to be around them. And so they're happy because we want to be around them and whatever and everything. They come in there and they get a job. They get two or three change of clothes. They get a car that's running and whatever. And you know, we have meetings twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday. We look around, they ain't at the meeting talking about something, we had Bible study, or we had uh, the men's fellowship or something like that. Well, hold up now. Bible study ain't helped you when you was, you see what I'm saying? I'm just using that example. Either I can't come to the meeting tonight because, you know, my wife wants me to do this or do that. You know, you forgot. You for and that's really my prayer is, thank you, Jesus. Mm. I preached a message a long time ago. Uh, Sister Booth always bring it to my mind when I see her. She said, I'll never forget that message, Brother Blaine. And that was Jesus. I'll never forget. See, that's the only time you get in trouble. The only time you get in trouble, even with me and you. If I don't remember, then look. When did nobody else want me? You see what I'm saying? You took me in. Love me, love me just like I was. Now you, now you know you got a pair of shoes and things and everything. Now you don't, I don't turn against you. And I'm going on to somebody that don't care nothing about me. You forget if you just, you know, and that's where my prayer is. Ain't none of us, one thing is, ain't, ain't nothing to none of us. Ain't no telling what you might do. That when you need folk to love you. That's because true. you see, folk that love that's you, true. when you mess up, they don't judge you. It's like, you know, you know so what, you know? But uh, I just, you know, just as the Lord, just help me not to forget where you brought me from. Help me not to forget that who you are and who I am. Because you start forgetting who you are, you, you'll mess up. That's yeah, all. that is so true. That is so true. Oh, just this, that was Israel. Yeah, so true, so true. But now, Pastor Bland, I'm, a, I'm you. You don't have to um, forget if you try to forget about coming to the meetings and then I like that. <laughs> yeah, I won't I won't let him miss the meeting. Come on. <laughs> Cause he got not just he remember, I remember. You know what I'm talking about. And I don't want to live like that no more. Mm -mm. I don't want to live like that anymore. But anyway, that's that's another story for another time. And so um so here you know, as he talked to them about two that would come that would, uh, uh, one would make the way for the other and then how Jesus would actually be the one to come to make things all together uh, right. And so uh, as he began, as he continues uh, to uh, talk to them, about uh, their behavior. He calls for them to return. Look at uh, chapter three, verse six. He says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinance and ordinances and have not kept them. You know, but I've still been good to you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. You know, it from, it, all you got to do is look back in your mind down through history and you will see how you have behaved the entire time. But I was the one constant that you could depend on. You could depend on me because I don't change. Mm -hmm. 
And Lady Deborah, you got to walk in love, not to change. Yes. yes. And walk in your flesh. Yes. You have yes. to walk. You have to walk in love, cause God is love. And if God is, you're supposed to walk in the spirit, not in your flesh, not in you. And so you maintain some integrity when you let God walk through you. Be, because you talk about, you're talking about what you won't do. Nick Rose will make you thank you, Jesus. You'll find yourself in the penitentiary or somewhere. I got a neighbor right now. I looked over there this morning. I told the Lord, thank you. Because he could have been dead. I could have been dead. You know, you got your dogs. I come out in my yard and everything. Your dog barking at me. <laughs> I said, I ain't, I ain't Sue. Thank you, Jesus. I ain't built up like that. I, I ain't made up like that. If it mine, me and you could be getting along fine. And you, and you get in my car and go to try and take over. We could have been in revival for the last three <laughs> weeks. It don't mean a thing to me. This man, when you get in here, you need to act like this man. <laughs> you know, I don't care if you got a, what, $300,000, dollars 600000 mansion. When you come to my little $50,000 house, you need to act like this man. <laughs> you, you, so I need the spirit. I need the spirit to help me not. That's because true. see, after you take somebody's life, you did this old, you know. That's true. You can do something. Okay, I'll go further than that. You can say something that'll never be forgotten. So true. So true. And that's reading my prayer every day. Lord, you you walk, you your spirit. Because me, I do something I regret later on. That is so true. That is so true. So walking in love is of supreme importance. And we know that's the only way that God could 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 love us. But because he is love. Because of how uh, how we how we do and how we how we are, and you got to, you got to humble yourself, Lady Deborah, and let the spirit instead of you. Because see, another side to that is is that even though I'm saved mm -hmm. and even though I know I'm supposed to be walking in the spirit, I hear another voice. I hear another voice that said they're trying to punk you. <laughs> And so I got to hum humble myself. And you'd be so glad that you didn't do it later on. But in that moment, you got a point to prove. You got to get them straight. And so, and so, and it's bad when we come out to church and we acting like that. But it's not the fact that ain't nothing wrong with God. I'm just not utilizing the teaching of God. Mm. But it causes, but I got to, come down. I got to come down, not do what I want to do. And then the Lord will give me some integrity. And let me say this later, I'll leave you alone. Mm -hmm. To me, one of the most impressive things in the world, and I use for example, I never liked LeBron James. I don't know why, I just didn't like him. <clears throat> but when he left Miami, now, I understand. Now, he went down to Miami because he didn't know how to win. If you don't know how to do something, you just don't know how to do it. He went down there, and them folks taught him how to win. But he had a love for the, for the people up there in Ohio. But now, when he left Sue, they talked about him like a dog. But when he had accomplished what he wanted to do, when he had learned how to win and everything, and uh, the Pratt Ryder thought he had his mind. See, people try to get your mind control you. He left there and he went back to them. And when I saw that, that just impressed me. I said, the way they talked about him, the way they put him down, but he, 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 he looked past what they had done in order to do what he knew that his destiny was, what he was. And that's when I really, and that started to, and, and, and if, if you want to impress me, when I see you, and I know folks have done, done you wrong, and I know that they don't like you, and I know they mistreat you, and I know that, and you let God work through you with the same person who tried to take food out your mouth yeah. that yeah. you will feed them. I know God working in. I know that's God. That ain't none of you. That's God. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's Thank where you. I want to be. Yes, Lord. That's where I want to be yes, in my Lord. life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Oh, that takes some humility. Yeah. That takes some humility. <laughs> it acts for absolutely does. You be so right. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. And so uh, now God is bringing to their remembrance and letting them know that all this time that, you know, the way you've been treating me, I haven't treated you the way you treated me. And so he says now, but it's time for you to return. Yeah. Come, come back. You've gone some way, you've gone a distance this way, but now it's time for you to turn back and come back to what you know that you said you were going to do when you covenanted with me at Mount Sinai. Now, I didn't tell you, you, you said it. You said that's what you were going to do. I didn't force you into that. I didn't force you into that. And so, you know, here they started arguing with him again. Well, what do you mean return? I tell you, they had every, at every, at every uh, juncture, they had a, a rebuttal to what Malachi was saying. Let me say this, saints, beloved. When people criticize you, and then folks criticize you that you feel like they ain't got no, how are you going to say something? If you learn just to be quiet. Mm. Mm. Help us, If you'll Lord. learn. Help us, Lord. See, the Bible said he that ruleth himself is greater than he that rules a city. Our battle is not with other people. Oh, Jesus. But our battle is with ourselves. Oh, my God. See, you're the only somebody that can hurt you. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And so that's the reason the Bible said the love of God constraineth us. When you walk in God's love, the devil can't call you out, mother, and put you out there where you, you see what I'm saying? And so, I'm going to leave it alone. Go ahead, Deborah. And so, <laughs> as he began to call them to return, see, they had gotten away from what they knew was uh, the right thing for them to do. God had set up a system through the law of Moses. And in this system was tithing. So as we talked last Sunday, uh, they, they were not tithing the way that it was intended for them to tithe in order to support uh, the priests the way they needed supporting so that they could focus on serving the people or ministering to the people. There were storehouses in the temple that was for tithe, the tithe of their grain, the tithe of their produce, the tithe of what they got from the land. They were to bring those and put them into the storehouse so that there would be meat there for those priests and offerings there for them to be able to 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 to, to uh, survive so that they wouldn't have to go out and work the field so that they could tend to them with their spiritual needs but they weren't doing that and so God called for them to return and says uh, that return to me and I will return unto you said the Lord of hosts but then they said in what way shall we return? What do you mean return? And God said to them through Malachi, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye said, wherein have ye robbed thee? They then tithing and offerings. And so the needs, as I said earlier, the needs of the priests and Levites were met from these sacrifices and also from the tithes, the uh, offerings brought to the temple by the people. And we know what a tithe is. A tithe is a tenth, uh, a tenth of uh, everything that they had. It was a tenth of their grain, 10% of their grain, 10% of their fruits, 10% uh, of their animals, and 10% of the money. And as I said earlier, there were special rooms in the temple for keeping all of that, that they brought there in obedience to the Lord. If you go back to Leviticus, and let's just go there, Leviticus, the 27th chapter. <clears throat> Leviticus 27, and let's look at verse 30, and then you can go over to Numbers. Leviticus 27. Okay. 
Leviticus 27 and verse uh, 30. Okay. 27 and 30. I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble getting there. <laughs> dollar uh, you they, they're, they're tithing right now and a lot of people don't want to pay tithes but you're going to pay it because that's because <laughs> that's supporting the government and the counties and the countries and everything you you, you actually paying more than 10 percent yeah <laughs> you actually paying more than 10 percent so well actually the tithe was never 10 percent it was 23 and a third and i haven't found anywhere where tithe was ever money it may be in there but I haven't found where it was ever money. Now you could use money if you didn't have like a, uh, the animals or mm -hmm. something like you that. Could exchange then you it. could exchange the mm -hmm. money for that. Absolutely. But the tithe never was money. And, and so uh, it says here in 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 uh, Leviticus 27 and 30, and all the tithe of the land, which is basically what Pastor Blaine is alluding to now, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. This is what was established by the law of Moses. Is the Lord's, it is holy unto the Lord. And if a man will at all redeem all of his tithes, he shall add thereto, which is again, what he alluded to, he should add thereto the fifth part thereof. And so go over to Numbers, the 18th chapter. Numbers 18. Numbers 18, and look at verse 21. Are you there? So the annual tithe was given to the Levites, who in turn gave a tithe of that income to the priests. And Lady Deborah, I just comment on that and nowhere in here where you give tenth to no Baptist preacher <laughs> I said that I said that because you see it's not like I'm trying to be smart or nothing like that but I want the truth yeah I'm 64 I'm, I'm on my way in and I don't owe nobody nothing I just want the truth and you know uh, I think Lady Deborah and I don't want to hold you up I think what happened in here and I may be wrong is that people don't put a value on spiritual things. You see a person that they in the gym, they get in their body, that which is good, the Bible says, the bodily exercise profit is little, but it will profit you. Uh, they work a job, two or three jobs, make sure that their power is financially secure. But you ain't trying to learn nothing about the Lord. And one thing about it is, Brother Herman, you can get so arrogant that you think you already know. And one thing, can't nobody teach you nothing that you think you already know something. And you are so, you are so, you are so biblically illiterate. You'll be surprised how many people that go to church every Sunday, been going to church all their life, and don't even know really what the 12 tribes of Israel was. And that's the reason the preacher can dupe them and tell them, tell them about something, you bring the tithes here to the storehouse and everything. You don't even know what the tribe of Levi was. You don't know how the system was set up. You don't even know that it was 23 and a third instead of, and it's right there. It's in the right, you know, you, you, the, the Bible you walking that you got right now is written in there. It's written in there. And one reason people can't just tell me anything, Tyria, because I read. I read. Sometimes I go against big time lawyers. That, you know, they, they, we call them high, they way, their office way up in the air, stuff like that. But I found this out. I can read the same books they read. And if I look in that book and ask God to give me understanding of what I read, there ain't no better than I am. And so, you know, and then you find people who get mad at you. Because, you know, if you got a pastor, I'm up under you, pastor. I'm up under you. God put you there, I assume I'm up under you. And I see something that don't go with what you've been teaching. And I come to you. I say, well, what about this? And then you don't want to, you dismiss me, you, you, I'm troublemaker. Well, I know then is you want to keep me ignorant. And I got to leave you alone. 
<laughs> and so, and 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 we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end. No, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going, but uh, I want to make these last few points, and then we're gonna stop. Uh, <clears throat> and so it says. Uh, in verse 21, I'm in Numbers 18 and 21, and behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance because, you know, they didn't get an inheritance like the other tribes. And so they needed the tithe in order to survive. And, and to, to clarify that further is they didn't get any land. Yes. When they came across and Moses Divide the land. Mm -hmm. Remember, there was two tribes. I can't remember the name. I think Reuben and Gad. That they wanted their land on this side, and Moses gave it to them. Said, well, "Okay, you can have this over here, but you still got to come across the Jordan and help us fight over here. Then you can come back." Remember that. Mm -hmm. But now he didn't give them nothing mm -hmm. because your portion is the lowest. That's right. And it was the responsibility of the other tribe. Mm -hmm. You take a tenth of what you have. Exactly. And you provide for them because they, they can't go out here, mother, out in the field with this. And they're going to be in here on search. Exactly. I mean, they ain't talking to me about that. And so everything that Pastor Bland said is what we were just getting ready to read in Numbers. So we, we don't have to read that now. He just clarified. He just clarified. You got your mask on the wrong side. And so, uh -huh, just t turn it on the blue side. Yeah, there you go. And so, uh, but, no, I appreciate the uh, expounding on that uh, because that's exactly right. And so they needed a tithe because that was their portion. The Lord had given them that. Uh, rather than give them the inheritance in the land. This is your inheritance. This, it, this is going to be your inheritance. And so um, the promise here then, it says, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that ye shall that there shall not be room enough to receive it. What we have to understand with this verse is that it is linked to the covenant uh, the Israelites had made with the Lord. That's linked to the covenant. So in, in robbing God, the people were not fulfilling that covenant that they had made with God. Therefore, God couldn't fulfill his promise and bless them because they didn't do what they said that they were going to do. And so if we go back to, uh, let's go back to Leviticus. Let's go back to Leviticus 26 uh, and 3. And then we'll go over to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. We always reference that because uh, it, it just absolutely helps us to connect the dots. In Leviticus 26 and 3, it, 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 here again, whenever you see the word if, that lets you know that it's conditional. So if means one party does something if the other party does something. If, if the one party doesn't do what they're supposed to do, then the other party doesn't, doesn't do, can't do what they're supposed to do. So in Leviticus 26 and 3, it says, If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the fields shall yield their fruit. We can stop right there. We can go on over to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. And uh, I'm trying to finish up, but I, want, I know I'm going a little over my time. Now, I said I was going to give you all some time back, but uh, Deuteronomy 28. Uh, and look at verse 8. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 8. <clears throat> 28 verse 8. Well, you know, I'll read verse 1 because it always ties in the uh, following verses. Verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, 
that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Who is he talking to? Israel. He's talking to Israel. And so in verse uh, 8, it says, The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Again, conditional upon them hearing and obeying uh, all the commandments that God had set before them. And so um, that's, that's basically the way that that went. Uh, you know, we, we probably almost in every church around that, that's going to open up this morning, they're going to cover this. But they're going to cover it, cover it in a way that it's bent towards their advantage. It's bent towards their advantage, and it is, is a way to, to get them to give. It's a way to get them to give. Because now if you think, Brother Kurt, I think you got your hand up. You got your hand up. Okay, okay. Because if you think, I'm just talking about the way people think. If you think God is going to withhold something from you, if you don't give him a certain amount of money, you're going to be trying to get that money. Because you want to get everything that God has for you. But you, you don't, you know, but the thing is, it's manipulation. You don't have to manipulate y'all. If you know God and if you're walking in the spirit, nobody has to manipulate you to give. You're going to give. You're going to give because you love the Lord. And you're going to give because you know that it's better to give than it is to receive. The blessing is not in what you get, the blessing is being able to give. <laughs> it, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. Blessing is being, and so you're going to always have. You don't even have to worry about it. You don't even have to worry about whether you're going to have something or not because if you're a giver, you're going to always have something to give. I know it's the truth. Somebody can walk up to you that you wasn't even thinking about and hand you something, and it won't always have to be money. Somebody can give you some time. Somebody can give you this talk to you and make you feel better, give you some encouragement. You will always have because you're a giver. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I bless God. I bless God because he doesn't have to control you like that. He doesn't have to control you like that. Y'all, and I tell you, the blessings will just come. The blessings will come when you're a giver. When you're a giver, and, 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 and people, oh, my God, when you're a giver, people will just heap things up on you. And I, I, I just, you know, you just sometimes you just don't even look for it. I'm looking over there at Robert who brought me two, two things, a, a, a purple hull peas. Just, just brought them to me. It brought me a job, chow chow, to go with him the other day. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Now I ain't do nothing. To, just, he just brought that to me. I ain't know Robert had me on his mind. Uh, I, I just, um, you know, I just, it, it just, it helps us when you read. And when you read with understanding. Let me, let me say this. Now, if you pay attention, this is very, very good, and I appreciate you. Nowhere in there does it say that if you do these things, you're going to go to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't say that. Nowhere in here does it say if you do this, God will forgive your sins. You see, the sin of Israel was taken care of, uh, I think it's Le Le Leviticus 11, I I'm not sure. But on the Day of Atonement, where the, 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 would, the high priest would go in once a year and offer the blood of a lamb. You see, the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. God has a blood system where blood uh, uh, purchases uh, or redeems. Not your actions, not what you do. He's telling them with the covenant they have, if you do this, then I'll do that. So then when some ignorant preacher says, 
on the radio that if you don't pay your tithes, you're going to hell. No wonder it is that Paul said in Galatians says that if any if an angel or uh, somebody come preaching any other gospel, and Paul, he said let him be accursed because you actually have people who that you believe. I would believe him. If I wasn't reading my Bible, if I didn't go to Manasseh, if I didn't know no better, this man here, he, you a preacher. I ain't no preacher, I'm a lawyer. So I got to believe you know what you're talking about. You have lied. And then you lied on God. They said that if, you, that if you didn't give God a certain amount of money, you going to hell. I don't know if y'all have ever heard it before, but I heard it. People send you to hell for all kind of things. Mm -hmm. You see? And when the only thing that will... Uh, cause forgiveness is the blood. And then folk get mad at someone somewhere you at, you think ain't nobody right but y'all. Well, you, <laughs> no, no, but I don't want to be taught wrong anymore. I'm going to end Malachi here, and I know I've gone over my time. Thank you, Pastor Blaine, for giving it to me. And so we're, we're going to end Malachi because he has one last accusation that he says. To, and look in, uh, I'm in chapter 3, and I'm in verse 13. He says, your words have been stout against me. 3 and 13. Your words have been stout against me, said the Lord. Now, because, you, you know... Um, Israel was, they talked hard. They talked hard. They said some hard things to the Lord about the Lord. Some real hard things. Wow. Now they t did this to the one who had, the only one that really cared about them. Brother Deacon. Yes, the Lord was the only one that really cared about them. But the they Egypt. talked to him like he, brought them out of Egypt. he did that. Away, and so he said, yet yeah, you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? They always acted like they didn't have a clue about what they had done or what they were doing. They just acted oblivious to, to everything that they had done. And so their thing was they felt like it was futile serving the Lord. But the Lord was the one who, you know, it's something when you bite the hand that feeds you. We said we, we say that to our, our children all the time or, or, or people who, you know, we, we you just like, look, you're depending on me. Hold on, Lady Deborah. I got to testify. Yeah, come on. I got to testify. And the reason I share is because the Bible says that no temptation taking you but such a common to man. We all going through the same thing. And I had a child, Sister Nettle Trice. I love my children. I love my family. One of the things that hurt me the most when I was on drugs is I couldn't act right for my family. I couldn't be there for my children. The dope wouldn't let me do it. But as soon as I got loose from that for those drugs, my wife can tell you, from that day to this, I've been trying to be the best husband and best dad I could be. But my son saw me wrong, and I understand that. You know. We different people, you have different perspectives. And he texted me, Uncle George, and what he texted me hurt me down in my heart. It wasn't all that disrespectful, but I felt like that he was attacking me. And uh, I took it, and I went on. But you know the Lord. I'm a firm believer that you leave things alone, and let, leave it in God's hand. And in his time, if it's supposed to be, and uh, yesterday, I got a text from him and said, can you talk? And I really didn't even want to talk to him. Cause that, you know, that hurt. But I went ahead, I called, I said, yeah, I called to him. And he called me and to put it in Elaine terms, he begged my part. And he said, well, you know, I was wrong. And whatever, I said, well, you know, ain't nobody all the way wrong, ain't nobody all the way right. But I appreciate you for being man enough to call me and to tell me. And in the end, when he went off the phone, I started crying. And I texted him back and I told him, and I'm just, I'm just sharing this with y'all. I told him, I said, uh, I appreciate you because you took a big burden off me. You see, people 
just like the Lord was, you know, with Israel. People that you love can hurt you so deep. Sure can, yes, sir. Yes, but sir. you got to go on anyway. You got to keep going. You got to go on anyway, because it's a test. It's a test of your faith. Because life ain't, scholar, even at your age, life ain't gonna always be like you want it to be. People ain't gonna always treat you like you want them to treat you. You don't know why, you don't know what you look like, it come out of nowhere. You're like, what, what, what you? I, I, I'm, I'm spending my whole life trying to make sure you okay. And then you, Jeff, I had the thought, <coughs> I said, the way my children are looking at me now, I said, I might as well have left them on the side of the road. It's trying to, you know, make sure, because if you like me, I'll make sure my children got something to eat if I ain't got nothing to eat. I will give my life today. I, I don't want to, but I'll give my life today for, for either one of my boys or my wife. I, you just take me, I got to go. And then for them, not to see you, right? It just hurt. You see, but I say, <clears throat> If you talk about the bad, then you got an obligation to talk about the good. So I'm just sharing that with you, just my testimony that, that he called me, it eased my burden. I feel a whole lot better. I, I just, but like I said before, you just got to go on. I thank God for that too, because you know, you deal when he, he walking around the house with a burden on him. I'm like, Lord, thank you. I appreciate God so much. <laughs> God is just good. Cause see, that lady Deborah ain't like me. <laughs> Her attitude so is about it. What she said, better, you better leave them Negroes where they at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. As long as there's some money around the house, Lady Deborah, all right. My thing is, like, this is my thing, Sue. Everybody doing what they want to do. You better get some joy and keep on moving. I, I'm going to end with this thought. And I'm going to end with this thought that nobody can afford to argue with God the way that Israel did. That's right. Nobody. Uh, when they heard what Malachi had to say, they were going back and forth, back and forth. And the reason they couldn't afford to argue with God the way they did is because God had the last say. I don't care what you say, what you think about it, how it is. God has the last say. Give the Lord a hand praise, everybody.